Once upon a time, there was a king whose wife had passed away, leaving him with their seven children, six princes, and one princess. The king loved to hunt and would often travel with his men to different forests in search of unique game. One day, the king stepped foot into a forest that was rather unique itself. The trees in these woods could get up, rearrange themselves, and plant back down so that one who is lost may never find their way out. The king had raced ahead of his men, and the forest closed him off from the world. His men left terrified outside and unable to help him. So the king wandered deeper into the wood to find another way out. Instead, he happened upon an old witch who offered her help and claimed she had lived in these woods all her life. She would help him, yes, on one condition. What is the condition? the king asked. You must marry my daughter and make her queen. The king was stunned. He had lost his wife not too long ago, and everyone in lands near and far had heard of his bereavement. I know you have lost your queen, said the witch, but my daughter will make a perfect partner for you. See her for yourself. The witch pointed towards a beautiful, white, sparkling castle within the forest, and out of it stepped her daughter, a most beautiful woman. The king did think she was quite lovely, but there was something wrong with her eyes. Something evil. Sensing his hesitation, the witch added that he will never find his way out of the forest without her help. And so, the king agreed. The pair were shown out of the forest, and the king kept his word and married the witch's daughter. On their wedding day, the kingdom celebrated and the king gathered his children to meet their new stepmother. Each child went to hug her, and while they could all see that she was beautiful... They did not feel safe with her, for it was something about her eyes that unnerved them. Considering his children, the king decided they would stay in their white, sparkling castle in the forest for a while, and managed to find his way there using a magic spool. The thread led the way where he had the princes and princess settle, and found his way out again with the spool. But the queen very much wanted to see her new stepchildren again and prepared gifts for them herself. Back at the castle in the forest, the princes played outside while their sister stayed in and was preparing their meals. The princes all heard galloping and excitedly assumed it was their father coming to visit, but the one riding the horse was not their father, but instead their stepmother. She threw magical shirts on them and they all were turned into swans. The queen, overjoyed, rode back to her kingdom after counting the swans, but in her haste overlooked the princess. The princess called for her brothers, but upon looking outside could only see their clothes covered in feathers. She ran out into the forest looking for her brothers until she came upon a lake where she saw six swans and realized what had been done. My brothers, what has happened? She called. Sister, they responded. Our stepmother has put a curse on us. How may I undo it? She asked. If you want to break the spell, you must sew us six shirts made from nettles, and over the next six years you may not speak a word or laugh aloud, or all will be for naught. The princess agreed and took to her task of sewing six shirts of nettles for her brothers to become human one day. Some years passed, and she, silent as always, had grown into a beautiful young lady sitting alone in the forest sewing nettles. A prince from another kingdom had happened upon her, and seeing how beautiful she was, took her for his wife. His kingdom celebrates the marriage, but despite the day's joys, she mostly took to sitting alone and sewing the nettles. Her husband would offer to have their servants sew for her, and questioned why she never spoke, but she silently took to sewing and he loved her all the same, believing it must be very important. Sometime later, the princess has given birth to a son, and once again the kingdom was celebrating. They invited royals and nobles from lands near and far to the christening, and one such royal was the princess's very own stepmother. The two instantly recognized each other, and the princess took to her room with her child. But the queen followed. Moments later, the queen emerged from the princess's room, screaming hysterically, Help! It's the princess! She's eaten her own baby! She is a witch! Everyone gasped in disbelief. The prince ran to his wife and said, It cannot be true! My darling, if it is not true, tell me so this instant. 
The princess, mortified, considered it. Tell me it's not true and I'll believe you, her husband reaffirmed. But the princess could not do it. For her brothers, she stayed silent. And so she was tied to the stake with the shirts of nettle she'd sewn at her feet for fuel per the queen's suggestion. They went to ignite the flames when suddenly six swans from the forest had flown in and untied her, each taking a shirt and transforming into their human selves again. Oh, my brothers, the princess called to everyone's surprise. Our sister is not a witch, they said to the people. Then where is her child? asked the queen. One of the brothers produced their nephew, claiming the queen had thrown him into the forest where they had found him and cared for him. It is you who are the witch. Everyone turned on the queen, and she began saying some magical words in an attempt to transport herself away, but in the process, mispronounced some words and accidentally set herself on fire and died. And so, the princess, her husband, their child, and her brothers all lived happily ever after. The end. <laughs>